Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about how to deal with imbalanced data sets for classification. So this would be a situation where you've got a highly imbalanced data set. And what that means is that you have the majority of the observations in one class or another class. But what you're looking to do is have kind of a more balanced uh, classification view in your training set so that you can correctly identify observations in the underrepresented class. And I've got a very imbalanced data set to show you some of these techniques today. This is a banking lead data set, which I've been using on a project lately. So I'm going to start by importing pandas train test split, which is your normal split. I just want to show you why I would use a stratified shuffle split for an imbalanced data set when actually t taking my data into train test splits. And then we're going to have a look at some techniques um, for oversampling, right? So oversampling the data set for training. So essentially, if I have a very low uh, representation in one class, I can use techniques in order to bring that up into a more balanced data set for training so I have a better chance of correctly classifying observations from the underrepresented class. So I've brought all those in and now I'm going to import my data and have a look at the data set I have here. So I have a data set with six um, features and one label. So this is essentially what this data set is. It's a bank lead data set. We're looking at 70,000 leads essentially that's already happened in the bank and the approval rate is very low with these um, so that's why it's useful for this uh, video because it's a very low approval rate. I think it's only 1.5% of these leads actually became customers um, and we can see that now with a describe mean and with the mean here because approval is a is a is a label it can only be zero one we can see what the mean of it is if i put this into a machine learning algorithm it would probably be very poor at predicting uh, that 0.146% because it's so underrepresented in the data set. So just looking at some of this data here, we have gender, monthly income, whether the lead was contacted or not, source and source category. We got a VAR, which is a, a VAR1, which is an anonymous feature. And then we have approved. So zero is not approved and one is approved. So for using SMOTE, this, we don't have to do this for random um, oversampling, but for SMOTE, what we have to do is encode these categories. What SMOTE does, it, it creates synthetic samples from the underrepresented class, but it'd be very hard for it to create a synthetic sample for the text, male and female. I'm going to encode gender, I'm going to encode contacted, source, source category, and VAR1 all into uh, category codes. Uh, I'm going to have my X. Uh, so my X is my features and the Y is my label. So my X is going to be all of these while dropping the approved. Just to show you what this categorical encoding does, let's just do another head here. For when there was text inside, all this categorical encoding does is it just encodes it into categories. So there's one or zero. There's loads of sources. So you can see the source 15, source 7. Contacted is only two, so it's zeros and ones. Source category is a couple of those, and there's a couple of VAR ones as well. Yeah, so what I'm doing is I'm going to drop the approved because that's my label and that's my Y. So that's fine to stay where it is. And I've run that and I've got an X and Y. And just to have a look at the Y dot value counts, I'm going to show you a normal uh, train test split, what it does. So this is giving me a certain number of training and a certain number of test sets and what i found with this one is it's not giving me the 0.148 it's giving me actually a 0.153 in the training set so i've got a lot more i've got a lot more of the approved in the training set and in the test set this is down a good amount so this is uh, a 1.3 percent i don't want this because you know i want to be able to to train and test on the same percentage as representative in the data set. So to do that, I'm going to use a stratified split. So I have to do an instance of splitter equals stratified subple split. Number of splits equals one. You can increase that if you want. Uh, random state equals 12. And then test size equals 20. For train test in, in splitter.split xy, which is my uh, x and y total data set, I'm going to do an x, uh, x train y train x test y test and this will come out with the same output as this essentially right so i'm going to run that 
and I can see now that I have a balanced data set in both. It's super simple to instantiate SMOT. Just gonna go SM equals SMOT and then XSM, YSM equals SM.fit resample X train, Y train. And unlike above, I now have a balanced sample of approved and not approved. So I got 54954, 54954. And I'm looking at the tail just because that the tail will contain some of these um, synthetic created data sets. So I'm looking at the tail here. And you can see that smote, you can kind of tell which ones have been created by smote because they've got these, like, I don't think anybody makes um, 10,610.588107, but smote has calculated this figure here. So these are all smote observations. And these are all, if I look at the Y values, corresponding Y values, these have all been approved. That was SMOT that creates synthetic oversamples. Now we'll move on to random oversampling, which just multiplies the samples in the positive class that are already there. To start off, we're gonna go oversample equals, uh, random oversampler sampling strategy equals minority. So you have to say what sampling strategy I want to employ here. And then I'm instantiating that as random oversampler the minority class and then I'm creating new X and Y so I'm calling it X over Y over equals over sample dot fit resample X train Y train again so this is my random oversampling print these value counts here same as before we've got 54,954 and 54,954 I'm gonna have a look at the tail of this so these are all again these are all my positive uh, classes from my oversampling and you can see you can even see in this that some of these are the same value, but I just wanted to show you uh, kind of how this differs from the other sets. So what, what this will do is it'll take your eight, 816, the 816 in the positive class starting off, and it will randomly oversample that uh, in order to just multiply out to 54,954. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing a query of the data set just to show you that how many times this particular observation, this top one here exists. So my oversampling, I've got this 566 times. So this particular one, exactly the same. Gender is one, monthly income is 5,000. Contact equals one, source equals zero, source category equals one, and var one equals four. I've got this 566 times in my over query sample. So this will just show you, just taking the samples from before and just really just pulling those all out, multiplying them out and getting 566 instances of the same observation. In my next one, I've got 607 observations of that in SMOTE, and I have 75 observations of that in the normal data set. So you can see that this is really, in both these sets, it's taking a observation and it's multiplying that out in order to balance out the data sets. So just a small word of caution on using these techniques. They will increase the accuracy of your underrepresented class, but they may reduce your overall accuracy. And why that happens is that you may introduce a number of more false positives in your overrepresented class. In this example, I had an accuracy of 99%, but then when I introduced this, it went down to about 75, but on the underrepresented class, I went from predicting maybe 5% of them to predicting 80% of them. So it's really a balancing act. Really use it when you're interested in a balanced accuracy. So I know there was a lot to take in. Any questions you have on this, please ask down below. And I'll see you very soon for another Python tutorial.